people in getting it out. Got one! Look at that, right off the bat. Oh, uh, They love this pattern. Hi, Peter Charles here, Fooked for Life, fly fishing. And before I get into this video, I'll have to make you aware that uh, <laughs> I was having a bad day of brain farditis, and I kept referring to this dragonfly pattern as a damselfly. So every time you hear me say damselfly, I should be a saying dragonfly. So I just thought, uh, let's get this video started with that disclaimer, and we'll go from there. So let's get going. Hi, Peter Charles here, Fooked for Life, fly fishing. And today, let's look at tying a damselfly. Now, this is a design of my own. I have played around with lots of other designs on the uh, internet and I wasn't crazy about them. I, I thought, you know what, I think I can do better. So I've decided to do it this way. It gives me the elements I'm looking for without a complicated design and it isn't too particularly tricky to tie either. It's fairly straightforward. So let's get started looking at the material. Oh, before I start, I should say what we're going to use it for. Damselflies are a fairly large nymph and they're predatory and they'll even eat tiny fish. Uh, so you want a, a relatively good sized bug and they're great for smallmouth bass, carp, panfish, trout, you name it. Uh, damselfly is going to be on the menu. So let's take a look at this one and the materials we're going to use. My hook is a size 8 streamer hook. It's too extra heavy, 4 extra long. Six, eight, something in that ballpark is going to work just fine. We're going to use this uh, 15 thou uh, lead wire, and you can see I've already put it on the uh, hook shank here to save some time. We're going to use this uh, olive 8 uh thread from Uni. Uh, anything in that ballpark will do. Olive brown, you know, olive gold olive, gold brown, something in that neighborhood is going to be fine. Our wing case is going to be this olive dyed uh, pheasant tail. The eyes are going to be lead dumbbell and they're, they're small. They're really tiny ones. Because this is an insect, you don't want huge dumbbell eyes. The body is uni yarn and a bronze. And we're going to use this hen hackle, a grizzly hackle dyed yellow. Uh, the reason for the yellow is simple. A lot of these uh, insects have uh, segmented uh, legs in terms of the color. The color is segmented as long as, the, as well as the legs. So they have a blotchy exper um, appearance, which is why I wanted to use that for a hackle. You could also use rubber legs in this pattern as well. So that would be an option. If you've got some rubber legs you want to substitute, go for it. So let's get started here. We're going to start our thread at the back. We're going to start our thread at the back and we're going to make a little bit of a lump here. Careful not to hook on the hook point. And that's just going to serve to stop our lead from sliding too far. Now we're going to take a little bit of CA glue and we're just going to put a little drop on the hook shank. Not much. And we're going to slide our lead onto that glue. There we go. Now we're going to make some wide turns with our thread and we do that to keep it from digging into the lead because we're going to cover that lead completely and we want the uh, thread to not bite in. Okay, now we'll cover that up. We're going to do the wing case and we're going to do two sides and you'll see why when we get to the uh, point of tying it in. Um, we're going to put about maybe six or seven barbs. Be a fairly generous with this of the your um, uh, pheasant tail because you were going to uh, have to make a fairly substantial wing case. Marry the tips together. And what we're going to do is you're just going to tie it on by the tips right in front of the lead. Widen that back over the lead. Wind forward, we'll get rid of these things. Okay, now we'll do the other side. Again, around six or seven barbs will do the job. Keep them on the side. You'll see why as we progress, why we've done it this way. Normally you would do a wing case in one piece, 
There's a reason why I'm doing it this way, you'll see. Part of it's to do with the Clouser construction. Okay, now on to tying in our lead eyes. You can put these fairly close to the uh, front of the hook, but don't crowd the eye too much. This was the problem I was finding with some of the other patterns with the material choices. They don't want you to put the eye too far back from the uh, eye of the hook, but when you go to tie the material in, you don't have enough room. So it became a bit of a fiddle, and it became very, very annoying, so I, I went, you know what, I think I can come up with a better design. So take your moment to straighten it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Bring your thread behind it. Now for our bronze yarn. And again, when you look at the color schemes for uh, damselflies, uh, I've seen amber, uh, brown, olive brown, olive, you know, they, you know some of those are almost black. So you're going to see a bunch of different color schemes. So uh, look at your local river bottom. That's going to dictate the color. Mine is mostly brown, brownish, olive-ish brown. So uh, I, that's the color scheme I'm going with because the insect will imitate the bottom. So that's what I'm doing with this. Now I'm just going to wind this all the way to the back. And I bring my thread forward and out of the way. When you're working with dumbbell eyes and you want to do half hitches, a half hitch tool is handy. Keeps things out of the way. Okay, so now we're going to wind on. First, we're just going to cover the lead. Go back. Because the shape of the body of a damselfly is more of a bottle shape, where it's fatter towards the end than it is towards the front. Now, I'm just going to bring my yarn very carefully at the back going uh, coming off the lead and trapping our wing case which we'll be using in a few minutes now we'll bring that forward coming off the lead now we want to get that flattened body look so we come in here with some smooth flyer pliers we don't want to use pliers that have uh, serrations on the jaw it's gonna make a mess of things so we squish it down And that's going to give our flattened body sh a bottle shape. Now we're just going to finish off the body. Now you could use dubbing for this if you wanted. You don't have to use yarn. Now we do our eyes. There we go. Eyes have moved any, just take that moment to straighten them up. Okay, now we're ready to tie in our legs. And you'll notice what I've done here. I've covered the body. Normally we tie legs or our hackles onto bare hooks, but I'm going to tie it over the yarn. And one of the reasons why I decided to do it this way, which is another aspect of the other designs I didn't like, is it, they crowded the hackle all together, which is understandable when you're doing it that way, uh, when you're putting on a bare hook. Uh, I wanted it spread out almost like I was palmering it to a certain extent. So I'm just going to bring this back to 
about there. I'll trap the uh, hackle. And I'll bring it to the front. Now we begin winding, and we advance as we wind. So let me brush it. So we don't have everything all stacked together. We're we're separating them. Okay. Okay, there is our hackle wound in. Now I'm just going to spread this around a little bit and push that down, push it away from the back of the uh, fly. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we're going to bring these uh, our wing case forward. Bring it up over the top. couple of wraps and take this moment to pick out any stray bits that got trapped. Now I'm going to make a figure eight here. It helps to pull your hackle out of the way. And I will wind that down and finish it. Now our last step is going to be to put, you can put UV glue, you could put some um, head cement, whatever you want to hold that uh, um, wing case together because what's going to happen is the first time you hit a fish on it, if you don't cover it with something, it's going to come apart. So we're going to take a minute and we're going to cover this with glue and then we'll get back and talk about it. Okay, there's our damselfly. Uh, we've um, protected the back with some UV glue, which gives it also a bit of a shine too. Uh, and uh, that'll make a nice hard coating at the back so our um, pheasant tail won't come apart because this stuff is delicate and the fish's teeth will rip it. So that way it's not going to come apart, it gives us a bit of shine and uh, that will give us the profile we want. You can see the fat body, the skinnier at the front and um, those Dumbbell eyes will get it down, and the lead in the body will get it down where it wants to be, but it'll ride Clouser style, so we're not going to be uh, hooking up and snagging that frequently. Of course, you will lose a few, but that's the other uh, reason why I didn't want a too involved pattern. It's because if you create a very involved pattern and you're fishing on the bottom, you're going to lose tons, and it gets very annoying to lose a fly that you put a lot of effort into, and... Uh, you'd lose it on the first cast. So, you know, it's a simple pattern. It's not meant to be pretty neat. It's meant to be effective. Get to the bottom, look like a damselfly, and catch fish. So give it a try. I said I said damselfly, dragonfly. I've been doing that. I've done like three or four of these movies. I've screwed them all up by saying damselfly. I said dragonfly. Okay, give it a try. Cheers. Got him. Got me out here. Oh, I bet you broke me off.